Hey everybody, it's Scoots. This is might be an early newsletter. There might be two versions of this, but I just um, wanted to do some talking. Maybe I'll do, actually, this will go out to everybody. Uh, a little recap of our event. Uh, we had about 22 listeners come out for our live show. We put together over 400 hygiene kits. I'm gonna drive them down to the Midnight Mission next week. Uh, and I had a couple, like, I just wanted to kind of do a recap. I don't have the pricing or the costs in front of me. I haven't figured that out yet, but I think we did pretty well. Um, but uh, what worked and what didn't work, that's what I wanted to kind of touch on uh, and just give a recap of, uh, you, you could watch the live stream, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. You could watch the show. It didn't really cover the um, putting together the kits, that's something I got to look into and gauge people's comfort level about being on camera um, and, and put that out to the live show listeners and then have to do like the media release stuff. So I just didn't want to have to do that um, if we were going to film it and record it and stuff like that. Um, but uh, what worked? We, we um, built hygiene kits from 745 to 815 about and that 30 minute time really worked well. Uh, everybody was on time for the show which was absolutely mind-blowing uh so that also helped i mean people were still trickling in between 7 45 and 8 but um like usually i'm not on time for i mean i'm an on-time person uh but so that was one thing that worked uh 20 people easily made 20 kits per person uh so the next show i'm kind of thinking oh can we make 30 kits a person uh, let's see what else. Uh, we ran out of some supplies. Um, one of which, uh, we're still trying to figure out the, um, hand sanitizer, like getting that right. Like, cause I was using hand sanitizer packets. We didn't have enough packets, uh, for even 400 kits. And that was my math. My pro my mistake was not running the math, which I had on my to-do list. Um, and, um, so we're still looking into that. So managing the numbers is important and making sure you have 600 of everything or 700 of everything, or in our case, 400 of everything. And then having a good, good researchers, uh, especially researchers that are willing to test out the products first and make a small order, that really worked. Uh, Judy in particular uh, vetted a lot of the items and I vetted some of the other items that we used. Um, and if so, if you're watching this and you're thinking about having your own hygiene kit party, I would say put in a small order first and put together like 25 uh, hygiene kits and test out the items. We, I tested out the chapstick. That was one of the things I was concerned about, especially finding like um, well-made cha chapstick or lip balm, I guess it's called well-made lip balm at, at a good price. Uh, and I found a few different ones, um, but I'm still trying to find best pricing on lip balm. Uh, everything else uh, went well. Like, I mean, we did a lot of research into the soap, the shampoo, the conditioner. I am going to run another test uh, with a different brand uh, coming up in between the last live show and this live show. Uh, but that's exciting. Um, shampoo, conditioner, lip balm, face masks that like face masks, we kind of got down, you know, um, what else is in there? Okay. So the big m mistake I made uh, was toothbrushes. And again, that goes back to testing. Most of the toothbrushes in bulk, you're buying a hundred toothbrushes at a time. And there were a lot of options out there all around the same price point. And we were looking for toothbrushes, ideally that were individually wrapped, um, or Judy found some that were foldable. So they were kind of like, like just, just for sanitary purposes, uh, that people's toothbrushes haven't been touched. Right. Um, and, uh, I, oh, toothpaste was, easy so toothpaste is another one that was easy we really got some good options um but toothbrushes i bought unfortunately the ones i bought 200 of so judy had bought 100 uh toothbrushes those worked great i bought 100 uh toothbrushes that were individually wrapped that were well made they were well wrapped i wish i had bought 200 of those and 200 of the other ones but the other ones i bought the toothbrushes were great they were well reviewed but the individual packaging was not good. And so I wasn't comfortable bringing them in a live show. I can use them at home for my own assembly because I know my hands will be clean and I'll only be touching the handle of the brush when I put it in the bag. And so like I'll take it out of the packaging, put it in the bag. So I'm comfortable with that. But at a live show, I just wasn't comfortable, um, you know, making sure we're delivering the best 
best thing, like like uh, and, and something that hasn't been touched, uh, like the the bristles. Uh, you know, nobody wants that in their mouth. So um, so that was a mistake. Is is vetting the items, uh, which this carrying forward. If we're going to do a podcast and a YouTube series about this, um, we're not going to be endorsing anything, um, but at least knowing what products are good. Um, the other thing that really worked, but that can be improved upon, is we did it a buffet style, but I was behind schedule, um, just realistically with my schedule. Uh, so what I did was uh, I bought a bunch of um, different kinds of bins at uh, our 99 cent store, which is a $1.29 store now, I think. Um, it did take a couple trips to find the right bins that would fit about 50 to 100 items, depending on the item. And some of the bins had holes. So I learned a couple things. Some of the bins have like small holes. They're not good for toothpaste or lip balm because they're going to slip out. Um, and also like looking at what the bins are made of makes a big difference if you're putting everything in your car. Some bins were made from a hard plastic and some were made from like a kind of softer rubbery type plastic. And the softer rubbery type plastic it, um, it, it it was a little bit more sturdy uh, because uh, a couple of the the harder plastic bins that are made from thin hard plastic uh, did crack. Um, I mean, it slammed my truck on, trunk on it, but um, just a reality. So that kind of worked. And then I didn't have time. I would have laid out two buffet lines uh, so that people could just go through the line in the same order I had a little checklist. Uh, this also worked. This was again, nine, thanks to 99 cent stores, this making little trays for everybody so that they could go through the line. It had a checklist of everything and pick out five or 10 items. And then um, they could you know, go somewhere and assemble the kits. And I think that really worked. I did not take feedback from the audience, which I didn't realize. So I'll do that at the next show of what else might've worked or might not have worked. Um, but I had kind of was behind, behind. so I need a little bit more setup time or to reach out to people that are gonna be at the show for help, um, just to set up two buffet lines, so it's just a little bit easier to go through the line and um, collect your items and then sit down. We had a lot of space. Uh, our normal live shows are 20 to 30 person um, experience, and 30 people is uh, pretty tight because about half the audience usually buys floors, like literal floor seats, so they can lie on the floor. And that worked spectacularly because the people that were already on the floor seats, they were able to spread out and put their kits together. But we had enough space where people were able to spread out, especially right now um, in, the, in the current environment, to have their own space to put together their kits with who they came with or to socialize. Um, but it also does create a good community vibe. Like uh, we had music playing. Uh, I was, you know, setting up for the podcast and saying hi to people and trying to crack jokes and stuff. Um, but it, it, it really lends itself to people getting to know one another, uh, even with some social distancing and, and stuff like that within people's comfort level. So I'm trying to think what else worked and didn't work from the top. Oh, no, okay, so yeah. Another couple things that didn't work. Um, was uh, thinking about, I had one gigantic box for all of the put together kits. And again, I didn't know what this was gonna be like, but that box I thought easily would fit 400 hygiene kits. Um, I think it probably fit 300 or 320 hygiene kits, not knowing, and it was just a, uh, a cardboard box that I had something else delivered in. Um, but I didn't realize like, oh, that's gonna be really heavy. So thinking about binning or storing it, cardboard box is not gonna work in the future. So moving forward, I'll, I'm gonna buy some, um, you know, larger plastic bins, but large only large enough for about 200 kits, because I'm betting 200 kits weighs about 30 to 40 pounds. And through, you know, then you're pushing 50 or maybe even more pounds. I don't know, you know, because I'm so uh, fit. Uh, but, but it's like, that's a joke, but, uh, I am fairly fit and, and that was a heavy box for me to carry and probably not the best idea. And also the box was like, even though it was made from sturdy cardboard, it was, uh, it was buckling under the weight of all those kits. Um, I think that's it. I mean, we're doing very basic kits. Again, if you're doing hygiene kit, uh, assembly, 
for your own distribution, you're gonna be distributing yourself uh, or you're gonna be working with an organization, find out what that organization's needs are uh, because they may, may need other items. Um, I think it worked, the, the uh, model we kind of have right now, um, where it's like I'm using ticket sales and I'm buying stuff and using the money from the ticket sales or other sources of income for the podcast, uh, that's not sustainable long-term because I don't even know like I got to figure it out, talk to my accountant and figure out what what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, I mean, right now I'm just a hobby, right? Uh, so I'm spending my hobby money uh, or donating in kind or whatever. But um, like having listeners ship the items to the venue uh, in bulk really did work, except that um, the unpackaging and the cardboarding. So I did go to the venue and pick up the items and then bring them here to put them in the bins, the assembly bins. Um but now I live in an apartment, so it's like the cardboard is another thing I got to be wary of um, moving forward. And again, yeah, finding idealized things would be like less waste. Uh, we are buying in bulk. Um, so I think that's it. I mean, I'll be interested to see later uh, next week. I'm going to try to get those bins so that when I bring them down uh, south or maybe I'll box them up. I, I don't know. Um, no, that's a good point. I wonder... Um, I think I have a couple cardboard boxes. Uh, I just have to tape, like I'll just have to make sure I have enough tape so that they're, the boxes are sturdy. Um, and then thinking about another thing to be aware of if you're in uh, wherever you live is like, I had to put everything in my car. Some of the items I put in my car, um, but most of them had to wait till the show because they can't be sitting in the car, like chapstick, uh, bar soap, um, particularly um, hand sanitizer. I don't think you want that sitting in your car. Uh, long. It smells great. The, 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 my, my place in my car smells great. But so yeah, I put that those things in my car and then drove to the venue, uh, which again made a time crunch. But again, that's kind of unique. I mean, I guess it's not like anybody doing this, you probably are having a day job and you're doing this uh, like, 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 you know, after work and stuff like that's very similar for me. I had another commit. I had to work on the podcast and had another commitment. And then I have the live shows. That's typical for all the live shows. So I think that's it. It's just a little fill in. There's probably going to be more. Uh, ideally, we're going to be making a, a podcast and this will be a video series about making hygiene kits. So I don't know. This isn't exactly the first episode, but it may, maybe will be the first one I post on YouTube. Um and we'll do some more breaking down of like how to make hygiene kits, why to make hygiene kits, what is a hygiene kit. But this is kind of a recap of, of our, our first live show. I guess explaining now 14 minutes in the video. I'm Drew. I make a podcast called Sleep With Me. So uh, if you're, this is your first time <laughs> this video, it's 12. It's a little late now. Um, but uh, we, we I have a lot, monthly live show we do where we do a live version of the podcast. People chill out, kind of fall asleep or have fun. And before the shows, we're assembling hygiene kits for people experiencing homelessness. Most of the hygiene kits we're bringing, uh, I'm bringing to the Midnight Mission. Um, but I also offer the option for people to take some with them from the show uh, to distribute on their own. Um, and yeah, we're always looking for other partners and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the setup is like, uh, but you could do this anywhere. You could do it at a park. You'd probably want some shade, uh, like you'd want to do it by a tree and you could just get some of those tables, uh, and do it as part of a party or part of, uh, fun. I think having fun things, uh, and making it part of a community event or of event of friends, uh, is an important thing. Um, because having fun makes things more sustainable and make it is a community thing. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, you can hit me up with any questions. If you're watching this, uh, make sure to join us. Sign up for our newsletter, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. You'll get access to the live shows. The next live show we're going to do, we're going to do a Zoom assembly party. Uh, I don't have any other details on that. We're still trying to figure out what that will look like, but that'll be a chance for people that aren't in the Bay Area to come put hygiene kits together in the comfort of your home and join in on a live show, but also be a part of the community aspect uh, with Sleep With Me listeners or you know people that are just interested and curious. Uh, even if you don't listen to Sleep With Me, you could take part, uh, get together, 
on Zoom with other like-minded people that, hey, we want to watch this weird podcast uh, performance later, but first we want to do something uh, that will make you feel empowered to be a small part of positive change. Uh, and those small steps have changed my life uh, and uh, I can guarantee you'll enjoy it. Uh, so I encourage you to join us, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. Sign up for that newsletter and you'll stay up to date on everything. Thanks.